you don't know where the shooter is at this point? He's behind me. Okay. And you don't know the state of this student on the ground? No. And you don't know who it is? No. Quickly, though, you realize who it is. Can you, can you tell the court what happened? I rolled the student over, and it was Tate Muir. And how did you know Tate? I had Tate and his brothers from elementary school all the way through high school. I've known Tate since he was about three. How, how could you have known him since he was three? His brothers were in my school, his older brothers, and so he was coming to school with mom. Mom was involved in our PTO. And what was that like for you? You can take a moment, please. When you're ready, ma'am, please let us know. It was crushing. I had to help him. I just need to save him for his mom. How did you try to help him? Did you see that he was wounded anywhere? Yeah, I, uh, I could feel the entrance wound in the back of his head. I could see that the bullet had exited through his eye. When I put my hand down on the ground, I put my hand in what would have been his, his eyeball. I um, immediately started to begin take his pulse. And check his vitals as best as I could. And then at some point you were trying to get his backpack off, correct? I needed to, I was trying to get his backpack off, but he's he's a big dude and I couldn't get it off of him. He's so heavy and I was unable to move him. He he was athletic and very strong. Yeah. At some point, you did begin giving him life-saving breaths, correct? I did. Okay. Were you radioing to anybody trying to get help? I, I was, and Curt News came okay. immediately, really shortly after me starting to get there, and he helped me get the backpack off. Did you see anything else going on while you were doing this? No. Okay. At that point, I was just focused on tape. When you started giving him breaths... Did you have any, did you, were you making any, um, did you feel like you were helping him? I just kept talking to him. And what were you saying? That I love him. That I needed him to hang with me. So what color was he? It was blue. But when I was giving him breath, he was getting lighter. So I just thought they were helping. So I kept giving him the breaths. How long did you do that? Felt like forever um, until until they took him away from me. And then when they took him away from me, I was telling him to keep giving him breaths. He needs air. It's like I could taste his blood. So much, so much blood. It was all over me. It took me a long time, months, probably almost a year to get the taste of Tate's blood out of my mouth. Christy, did you see the defendant after that? He, at some point while I was giving breaths, the police had arrived and he came out with his hands up and he was on his knees. 
um, with his hands up. And they were trying to figure out who he was. And he didn't answer them. I, I don't think they, I don't think he answered them when he said his name and, or they asked for his name. And so I got up from the tape to run over and say, his name's Ethan. And then I, I ran, and I ran back to tape because I didn't want to leave tape for too long. The tape. Do you think, uh, recognize your voice? Do you, do you have any? I hope so. I don't know. He didn't give me any response. There was no response from him. I called for an AED. They brought me one. He had a, a pulse, so I just kept giving breaths. And you could get his color to change with each breath to about a gray. After he was taken away, or they, they took him to get help, correct? They did it. After Ethan was secured, um, they took tape. And like How long I said, were you at that school that day? 10.30 at night. I didn't know I couldn't leave. 